Hey everyone, my name is Justin Woodring and this is Computing Science with Justin Woodring. Today, uh, by popular demand, we'll be taking a look at anti-escape codes again, but we'll be looking at the movement anti-escape codes. So, in a previous video, I covered um, coloring your text output in a terminal with, well, you know, anti-escape codes. Um, and so I got quite a few comments actually asking for some uh, other anti-escape codes like movement. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Now, to clarify, um, there may have been a little bit of confusion about the fact that anti-escape codes are specific to one language. And in my last video, I used Python. So to, in today's video, we'll be using Scala because it's a fun language that I like to use. And it's to prove more or less the point that you can really use actually any language. Um, C, Rust, whatever, actually, um, because anti-escape codes have nothing to do with the language at all and are more or less a kind of holdover concept from um, the much earlier generations of computing. So let's dive in and look at some anti-escape codes. So I found this um, pretty cool, uh, basically kind of like cheat sheet um, for these codes that um, it's not my work, but I'm going to share it in the comments so you guys can take a look at it. And um, it should explain a lot of kind of how this stuff works. So first of all, anti escape codes, they always start with escape. Um, you know, there's an example of one of the color types of escape codes we used. Um, I think we used the Unicode escape sequence as opposed to X1B, um, which is the hexadecimal. But that's neither really here nor there. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is convey an escape key to the terminal. Um, so moving on, you have your standard uh, keys that you can use like backslash T for a tab, backslash N. People are relatively familiar with this one. Um, and these are just well-known like keys that can be combined on the keyboard really quickly. But these are not really so much control sequences as they are just general ASCII codes. Um, and uh, if we go back up here, we see that this, for example, looks more like your standard control sequence. Um, they typically follow a specific format of an escape, and then you get this thing, um, let's open bracket, and then after that, whatever follows is relevant to the specific sequence of or command you're trying to um, input. So um, if we go ahead and scroll on down here, these are the ones we'll really be looking at today. Um, and really, not all of them, because most of the time you won't need more than maybe half of these. Um, the, um, this one here is particularly useful for because it just lets you go to a specific location. These are um, going to be used for just navigating up, down, left, and right. We'll be showing some of these today. Uh, and then also an interesting note is that if you've ever had like a kind of buggy program even trying to run your terminal, and if you start pressing like the arrow keys, um, sometimes it'll start like printing out the, it'll print out this followed by like the A or the D or whatever. And that's because the terminal's actually echoing the command sequence for moving left and right, which is kind of interesting. Um, and also, again, kind of like a goofy holdover. It's how that technology really works. So it's cool to see that. Um, so. Let's go ahead and look at some code and see what these things actually do. So Scala is kind of a weird language um, because it you can write it in script form. You can also make an entire like library slash Java type of project out of it and compile it. But we're looking at a script form. The syntax is actually relatively similar to um, Python in the sense of like it uses you can use tabs for your control blocks and whatnot. Um, but, I mean, generally the whole point is to demonstrate that, though I'm using a different language, is to demonstrate that the concepts apply regardless of what language you're using, even though the way you specifically format the characters might look a little different. Um, so, if you remember from the guide we just looked at a few seconds ago, we have the move to instruction here that I've decided to implement, and that basically performs this, this is the escape code in Unicode, um, this zero 01B, so I'm escaping a Unicode character 001B, which is the actual escape character. Um, and then the bracket followed by this basically is a string interpolator that just dumps the value of X straight into the string. 
and likewise with Y, and we follow that up with an H. So this is what it says, go to this location. Um, and then we're going to print out a character. This is used to move the character left one, and we'll see that in a little bit, but um, that's to counteract the printing of the character, which automatically shifts the, car or the cursor to the right. Um, and then we have this move up, which is the A, um, and I, this is actually wrong because it should be a D. Um, I'm gonna fix that real quick. Uh, so this one moves up, this one is gonna move down um, left, as, you, uh, as I said it should be D, and it is, and then move right is C. And again, the reason we're putting all these, uh, this sequence here is to, this part counteracts the printing of the character. Um, so I, what was the other part? Um, oh, yes. So uh, I've basically created this um, little character kind of class thing. And what this is going to do is basically print a little circle and it kind of goes up and down. So um, we're going to see kind of this in action. Um, and so when we instantiate the class, it's going to move the cursor to this location, which calls this function and basically prints the stuff. And then, of course, we're flushing to make sure that the screen is current. Um, down here, I've declared the screen class, I guess you could say, and it basically it creates an instance of the character that we saw above. Um, we're going to set the screen buffer, which basically um, this sets a specific screen space of 40 by 25. That's just this is a well-known kind of variant. You can look it up in that list, actually. This clears the screen, so normally there's a bunch of text on the screen at this point from running the code, but it will clear it out so we have a fresh canvas to work with, basically. Um, and then finally, we enter our draw loop, and this is basically just going to say, oh, well, if you hit the borders of our 40 by 25 box, we're going to print, you know, move right, move down, move left, whatever. It goes around in a circle um, counterclockwise. Or, actually, yeah, counterclockwise. And then we're going to sleep for just a little bit so we have some time to watch it moving. Uh, this is very short. It's 10 milliseconds. And then... Um, also, the box will get smaller, and it will increment the um, it will increment the char or character that we're printing as we move leftwards because the box gets smaller from the right side. Um, so let's go ahead and run this, and then we can see all of these commands in action. Um, I'm going to slow it down a little bit so you have some so you can see it a little better for that 30 seconds, um, and then we're going to run this. So. A second and it's actually waiting for me to press enter here um, so I'm just gonna do that and then so you can see it's going around and we're using these move right move up move left move down chars over and over and over again um, and of course we also actually set the first character location and as I said this box is getting smaller and it's actually printing over itself but what's cool about this cursor movement overall is that we're not actually like printing an entire thing all over again. So like the naive solution to this problem would be, oh, let's clear the screen and reprint the entire box. But in reality, all we're doing is actually just moving the cursor and updating one single item at a time. Um, so, you know, like if you've seen those random programs people write in like Python when they're learning how to write them, they'll oftentimes like reduplicate the entire image and spit out just a huge bunch of characters. But we're not really doing that. We're just updating this. Um, the same buffer over and over again um, with like minor increments. So it's really cool. Um, you can use this to make like, you know, rogue lights and stuff like that. Um, they little like dungeon type games and stuff um, where you can basically move and update characters at will without having to change the entire screen. Um, creates a better experience for the user and it's actually less difficult on the system overall. So um, yeah, there you have it. This is movement characters with ANSI. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, drop a comment, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And until next time.